So hi guys, I filmed this back in September 2021, it was actually my birthday and it was actually the perfect day, it was beautiful weather, lovely and warm, 22, 23 degrees, a little bit of a breeze, but absolutely lovely, really, really good. The only bad thing was the fuel crisis, people panicked buying petrol, so I kind of got stuck in a few little places where petrol stations were, other than that the, uh, the roads were pretty quiet, but it did make me drive economically and believe it or not the car did 51 to the gallon in the end, uh, on an average, uh, over the whole whole day there and around and everything so that was really good so yeah perfect day off to the zoo uh, port limb beautiful day port limb and got a car parked under the shade unlike everyone else because it's still 22 degrees so that day i actually bought a year ticket uh, it was 70 quid for a year and you can go as many times as you like you get three safari rides which is this what i'm on now uh, i've been in it a couple of times over the years and was kind of a bit um, disappointed and such because you just don't know where the animals are uh, today or this day was awesome it doesn't look it at the moment because we're just driving along one of the roads and didn't really see much at the beginning but as we got back round we saw quite a few animals and then the giraffe basically blocked our view uh, not our view our um, sort of progress so 25 minutes whilst we were waiting for another ranger to come and help move them it was quite brilliant because we had giraffe so close to me that I've never seen them that close in my life. You know, it's so easy to get photos of them uh, with the 100 or 400 G Master. Uh, and even on my phone, as you can see there, super close. Um, that made the day. It was absolutely amazing that, you know, you suddenly realise how inquisitive they are. Actually really quite intelligent as well. The only downside and the hardest part of this was, obviously when we were stationary here, it was absolutely perfect. It was really, really good. We sat here for 20 minutes or so. And the bits before, um, driving around and stuff, so bumpy that trying to hold the camera while you're moving along, even though you're only doing between 5 and 10 miles an hour, um, stabilisation on the camera working amazingly, but it's actually trying to keep the camera on your target sometimes is really, really difficult. So I'm quite lucky to get some of the shots that I did uh, while we were up and around driving around on the, around the grounds there. Uh, but yeah, really, really pleased. Such a good day. Well, right, guys, it's another year older, but beautiful day. So I've come back to Port Limb because I've got my year ticket. The RX10 Mark IV is now being inspected, being, you know, have a look at it and see what they can actually do with it, whichever they recommend. Um, so A7R4. And I've just been on the safari, which before I couldn't get on because it was so busy. Absolutely banging perfect. The giraffes basically held up the um, truck so we couldn't go anywhere and they were so inquisitive that we basically just sat there so it took quite a few hundred shots of giraffe doing things um, also the ostrich as well were there um, really really cool so that's made my day literally uh, really really interesting animals actually to watch and how they look at you and things like that so really really nice perfect day a little bit of a breeze 20, 22 degrees I think it is so I'm going to carry on walking around see if I can see the lion so I walked around to where the lions were, and like, they got little cafe pods and stuff everywhere. So I just grabbed a um, slush puppy or polar ice, as this or polar crush, this was called, uh, you know, and just sat there and just appreciated what was going on. The lions, it was so actually quite warm that they were actually hiding um, behind their logs. Um, they've got a new sort of massive enclosure, so this is going to be quite good. Hopefully, going to build some more viewing points and stuff, so we can actually get some much better shots. So I will be going back uh, through the year, hopefully have to get some better shots of the, uh, the lines but with 800 millimeters with the uh, 100 400 plus the two times converter on this is what you can get and i was a good hundred so 100 meters or so away um here are some of the photos i'm not going to dull you with some of the settings but most of the time i was shooting f5.6 iso 100 and anywhere sort of anywhere sort of one five hundredth of a second up to about one two thousandth of a second depending on how much sunlight there was and what I was actually shooting so I was obviously adjusting it as I needed uh, using uh, zone uh, AFC and sometimes the eye autofocus was working on some of the animals which was quite pleasant to see it did work on the giraffe a few times uh, and as you can see some of these shots here I just a lot of them I just changed to black and white I just thought it kind of suited the mood a little bit you know, some of the uh, the fauna and stuff like that, green grass, just didn't kind of look right for the kind of animals that I was photographing. Obviously, this is in the UK, a place called Port Lim, uh, and they do a lot of uh, 
breeding programs and stuff to get the animals back into the wild and save them from extinction. And obviously, if, you know, it sort of takes a long time, but they have done quite a few. This shot here was, I was surprised I actually got it because the truck was moving so bouncily around that my camera was just going up and down and I was missing, I missed a few shots, but it did lock on quite nicely. He's, <laughs> the zebra's fascinated by this fly that's flying straight towards him, but I managed to get that as well. And we're still moving, by the way. But I was sort of shooting one thousandth of a second upwards just to get his shots. And then he just wandered away as we went down past uh, him there. So, yeah, it was yeah interesting. Um, there's a giraffe sticking his head through the tree. And I thought this was quite funny because that's the, uh, the bottom of the giraffe sticking up through the tree. So kind of same animal, two shots to kind of bring it in. This is how their eyes are on the, the giraffe. So pretty cool. Nice long eyelashes, quite colourful eyes. It almost matches their hair colour as well. It's an absolutely beautiful animal, really. And really odd at the same time. They're sort of stunning, but odd. It, it, it's hard to explain. But, yeah, like I say, I've never been this close to them before. Um, with so much ease as well. I was just sat in the back of a trailer, in a military sort of style truck uh, trailer. Um, just to manage to get these um, shots. Had a good chat to the people who were with... Uh, with me in the same thing, it was quite quite nice. Ostrich there, quite close up. Some of these are cropped in quite heavily, but obviously A7R4A. Oh no, it was actually A7R4 then, not the A version. Um, I could crop in heavily, which is which is great when you've only if you've only got 400. But that lens is nice and light, and you know it's not too big either, so it works really well in sort of situa situations like this. And then I stuck the two times converter on occasionally. This is a um, at 400 millimeters f5.6. And there was the baby one as well. There's a couple of babies, I think. But this one here was obviously with its mum and dad, I suppose, um, looking for affection. And uh, the next shot here, you can see a little bit of like rubbing its head up against mum. I think it was mum, mum, I suppose. Um, just really cute. And just shows you, even the baby was like seven feet tall. <laughs> it's crazy. A uh, bit of a tongue action there, which is pretty cool, just licking his lips. Um, but yeah, the markings and everything, just stunning. You know, you see photos of other people's work and stuff like that, but actually, until you've actually experienced it yourself, it is a different, different way. Unfortunately, shooting into the sun, so I had to overexpose the background a little bit. Um, this shot here is almost like it's smiling, probably cute. Um, and uh, the ears and everything being backlit by the sun as well, so it worked quite nicely. Uh, up in the tree again, looking down through. This is one that went off on its own, and then was just looking back and looking at the rest of the, I guess they were called a herd, um, or group of uh, giraffe. And this is the benefits of the high megapixel sensor. So that's a shot of a dragonfly in flight, and then the cropping power with no real trouble at all. Um, it had one little dot, a uh, focus dot, following uh, across the uh, across the sensor when it was actually focusing. Like this one here kept coming back. To, with dragonflies, they seem to have a routine. They like to come back to a post and they or a, or a point where they land regularly. They sort of do a little tour around and uh, go around. This is, I think this is called a palace cat and I've only seen it once before um, and very inquisitive, pretty clever, um, very odd looking but at the same time most amazing eyes, uh, you know absolutely crazy on how the detail of the eye and everything but so big so I'm guessing they spend a lot of time in the dark, I'm guessing that anyway, um, it seems to live in the rocks and stuff but yeah what a what a cool cat. Um, big teeth as well, um, but yeah, it's, it's very inquisitive, and I think it was must have been feeding time coming up, and uh, it was running around and trying to find uh, what was going on. This is 800 millimeters because I was just taking photographs of the lions up on the enclosure, but this is a dragonfly that's landed. That's 800 millimeters f11 with the uh, a7r4 and the 100 or 400 with the two times on. So just shows you it can be sharp the two times converters um, so if anybody sort of has their things about it you just gotta have good light at the end of the day um, the quality of the the glass inside the teleconverter is very good obviously it's you know um, expensive for a reason but the you know sometimes it's trying to get the focus points right this is where the like, lioness was sat behind the logs there so it's quite difficult to focus on that's a huge crop in by the way this cat here, I can't. I start, think so. It started with a C. I can't remember now. But a vicious little thing, um, having a proper munch. But you would never seen it before either. Um, so I'm going to look at the times when I went back, and I have a feeling this was sort of about midday. Um, 
something like that that they get fed so it obviously comes out so it's kind of worth finding out when they go and eat or get fed at what sort of times they become most active because obviously they're used to being fed because obviously they're in captivity um, shot the tiger there and he absolutely spotted me as well um, full on eye contact I was like oh god you know, I'm glad I've got a fence between me because that could have been a a different moment but shooting quite high ISO because it's very dark in there in the woods um, but you know I think it was like a th 1600 ISO, yeah, 1600 ISO, something like that. Even though there's lots of light above, it's dark in there. So to get my shutter speeds up, it's all right on video, but um, you know, it's it's difficult sometimes, and very challenging. So yeah, but shots are very pleased with most of them. There's a few, I had a few non-keepers. The baby lion cubs were cool, but they this, I mean, this is cropped in heavily as again. These were about, I'm going to say, 50 to 75 meters away. Um, in their woodland bit and uh, it, the baby ones were just running around while the, the adults were feeding and whatever and then on the way home stopped in just to top the fuel tank up because that's when I went down to Winds Pit Quarry a couple of days later so I thought oh, I don't mind queuing up just to have a little bit of a top up so I managed to top the tank right back up and then ready to go so if you haven't seen that video yet um, have a look and uh, that was a good photo shoot actually down with Charlene and Nick we went down to Winspit Quarry which is near um, Corfe Castle and yeah that was really good so yeah just a really this is just a little bit documentary I've been so busy this is like three months ago I should have done this <laughs> uh, I've just been working so much and not really had much time I've had time to do the odd little short video but there's things like this have you know take me a little while to do so yeah anyway again hope everyone's having a good new year and uh, yeah, please uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button, little notification bell as well. And I'll see you soon. Cheers.